Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is CJ. I want to welcome you guys back to episode 10 of the Innovator Marine 75 EXT Reef Build. And this has been a full build series. So if you just stumbled across this video or YouTube, you know, gave you a good old recommendation to check out CJ's Aquariums, make sure you check out the full playlist one through nine and get caught up on everything we've done up until this point. And that way you can kind of tap in and know what's going on. But just kind of recapping what's happened so far as you guys seen qt that is the last time those guys are going to be in there they're migrating to the display and we've also been working hard on building up the pod population of the tank because that's going to be a major part of my new master plan so without further ado let's jump to it so before we migrate all the fish from the qt to the main display it's time for a few water changes to resolve some issues that i've noticed so got to start off with mixing the salt right this is gonna be the Aquaforce Hybrid Salt. Now this does include probiotic bacteria. It's important to mention that because you cannot mix this and store it for multiple days. You have to kind of use it as needed. So because I know I'm gonna be doing multiple water changes today, I ended up just kind of making multiple batches. Be Easy Water Change Station is in full effect. I'm gonna walk you guys through how it works. So you may be wondering, you know, what's up with the water changes while you're doing it after the cycle? Well, mainly to remove two things. The first being all of the smaller sand that was causing me a headache, you know, blowing all over the tank, mainly due to me adding the wrong size. The special grain size was the best size to add, but the sand bed was not deep enough. So I added another bag of Fiji pink sand on top, which was a smaller grain. And that's where the issues came from. So I thought, you know, if I'm doing a water change on the tank, I might as well take advantage of the opportunity to siphon the sand bed, not really for detritus, but actually to remove the smaller sand particles. They float easy, they blow around easy, and they were the ones that would go through the tube the easiest. The heavier sand settled down, and that's pretty much all I was left with was the size sand I needed to not blow around the tank. So it actually worked out perfect. Um, and the second reason I did this, well, was the, due to user error, of course, uh, during my fishless cycle, the last stages, I tried to kind of overbuild the bio load in the system. And by overbuild, I mean I overdosed the ammonia. So after waiting and waiting and waiting, it just would not process the amount of ammonia I had in the tank. So I went ahead and did a water change to kind of dilute that. Ended up taking a few water changes to get it done, roughly around, I'd say, 100% or more. But we ended up getting it all mixed up and, you know, getting it all out of the tank. So... For the guys wondering, that's roughly around 30 gallons or so. And this water change station is working out beautifully. After the salt's mixed, just turn a couple of levers, send all of that water through to the sump on the main system. It takes its time and mixes through the entire sump. First chamber filtration goes through the second chamber, salinity, temperature, all that gets a chance to kind of match itself up. And then it goes back up to the display now. The tricky part was matching up the pump speed from the water change station to the pump speed on the tank. So that way, you know, the return pump didn't run dry or the sump didn't over flood or anything crazy like that. So this is kind of work in progress as I've done multiple water changes on the tank since this video. I've kind of gotten it nailed down, you know, as far as the exact speeds to where, you know, I don't have to worry about this running dry or the sump flooding. And honestly, when the time comes to where I don't have to do a major water change, I'll actually be able to take advantage of this extra space in the sump and never turn the system off. I believe I can probably get 10 to 15 gallons of water in here on top, you know, with the tank running, you know, let it run through and then siphon it out. So the Be Easy water change station is definitely worth all the trouble and basically eliminated any buckets or any, you know, moving trash cans around. The hardest part of the water change I have to do is literally starting the siphon. So, you know, do I want to siphon the water out on its own and just walk away? Or do I want to take the time and do some tank maintenance and deep cleaning on the sand bed? That's pretty much the biggest decision I have to make. Other than that, it's just kind of flipping a couple of levers, you know, and making sure that the tank refills. So I figured I would share this process with you guys. This is kind of the first time I'm showing it on video. But since this video, you know, it's definitely been refined and I'll kind of update you guys on the process as I go. But be easy, water change station, full effect. 
and I'm glad that I ended up making this. So now that the QT tank is completely empty, everyone's been moved over to the main display. What do you do with it between batches of fish? You know, this is my first QT tank and I kind of battled with this decision. And ultimately I landed on just leaving it running and cycling due to the first batch of fish not eating any medications or any dosing or anything else i figured it would be more beneficial to just let it keep cycling let the bacteria in the tank you know continue to build up until i have to do something different now something else i want to mention next batch of fish is going to include some sand dwelling and sand sleeping rasses so i'm going to be adding sand to it and for those that you know just waste all your water change water since i'm changing so much why not use that you know waste water to rinse the sand so that's exactly what i did ended up rinsing out around i guess a couple pounds of sand added them to trays and revamped the qt tank so at this point the tank is running empty it's ready to go it's ready for the next batch of fish and which i'm currently on the hunt for i'm looking to complete all of the ras selections i can you know including a radiant ras uh yellow and green chorus ras maybe some kind of combination of leopard brasses not sure they're really just going to depend on what fish are available and which ones i can order online versus which ones i can find locally not sure so the main point is the quarantine tank is looking fantastic it's crystal clear you know water cycle and ready to house anything else i want to put in here so you know we're definitely going to quarantine and observe every single addition when it comes to fish and then eventually once the tank is fully stocked i'll think what to do with this tank next either you know sell it rehome it to a new hobbyist or you know repurpose this for something else we'll see so there has been a major addition to the 75 ext build that's right guys we finally have a controller on the tank for monitoring and you know alerting and everything else that's included with the neptune apex system so if you follow my channel, well aware that I did run an Apex on the 120 gallon build and the JBJ 65 gallon builds. And I'm glad to be able to add one to the 75 EXT. And honestly, after running the tank naked for a few weeks and having no idea what the pH was or the temperature or, you know, any potential alerting that, you know, gives you that comfortable feeling when you're leaving your tank, I'm glad to be able to add this new system now. The quick changes I did notice, they include a water level sensor, which was different. Never had this before on the old system. And it also includes a leak detector uh, that can both plug right in without needing any kind of FM1 module or additional modules. So if I only wanted to add it, you know, two more things, I wouldn't have to add anything else. Just plug them right into the main unit. Now, as far as probes, you got your temperature, your pH and ORP looks like they did not include a salinity probe anymore not sure if that's really going to be needed but we'll see and when it comes to the probe holder already had the innovative marine probe holder in the closet just kind of waiting for this day when i ended up adding a controller just in case so i'm glad i had this on standby because we're going to go ahead and put it to use so for those wondering you know wire management what did i do well honestly guys i just dropped the shelf down and hooked all the power cords from the back of the dj bar and just plugged them into the apex so this was kind of a rough install just to get it going and if you guys want more information on how i'm programming this or you know the ultimate plans drop a comment down below and i will do a full apex video in the future after i get all this sorted out and programmed because it's a lot of potential and a lot of you know redundancies to put in I'm definitely gonna take my time with it so for those that are new to the channel never seen underneath the tank this is going to be the innovator marine nouveau sump and i have tons of flow going through here guys i'm actually running the return pump at 100 percent power anywhere between 1200 and 1500 gallons per hour i've always loved a high turnover in my tanks and through the filtration i feel like it's just gonna maximize its efficiency for what i need now, as far as mechanical filtration, you know, I've run that as needed for now, I'm trying to polish the water, but ultimately guys, I'll be removing it. Now, what you're looking at now is gonna be the Rain 2 algae scrubber from Santa Monica Filtrations. As you can see, no algae on it. Have not turned the power on to these lights yet. I thought about doing it, but because I just did a major water change, nutrients are pretty much non-existent in the tank. I'm not gonna turn it on. What I will do is let water run through it continue to you know help biologically filter the tank continue to grow that biofilm on the screen and what i found is when the time comes 
a, you know, a broken in screen grows algae a lot faster than something fresh out of the box, you know, still with the manufacturer's residues and all that stuff on it. Go ahead and just, you know, let it grow and let it keep doing what it do. So, you know, down below, just got all the live rock media down there. It's going to be the live rock rubble from the LFS and the leftover accent, you know, rocks that I have in the display. If needed, I'll be able to put them up top and, you know, add coral to them. So for guys wondering, I have finally added carbon to the tank via media bag. This is going to be the Simply Aquatics media, uh, the carbon. So just kind of chemically filtering the water. If there are any contaminants, got it in a high flow section in the overflow in the sump. And that's going to pretty much get it done. I'm going to remove that as needed. Carbon is not something I'll be running 24-7. And then the skimmer, it was doing crazy work soon, you know, earlier. But here lately, it has not pulled much. This kind of lets me know how clean the system is. So for right now, the system's a little too clean for my liking. And we'll discuss that a little later in the video as far as my master plan. But I just want to give you guys a quick look. You know, underneath the tank, kind of document this once again. I'm in this hobby to document and kind of share my experiences. And me, personally being able to look back and see this is going to help me as well. Now, there was another major change to the tank, and it has to do with the aquascape. As you can see, sand bed is now completely open underneath the floating arch. After staring at the tank for weeks, I felt like something was still wrong. And it's crazy how just removing something changes the entire look. So now, this nice floating piece of, you know, centerpiece of the scape, this floating archway is now all negative space around it. Nothing distracting it on the sand bed. No corals will be underneath it. I really enjoy the pure shadow it cast and just the overall look. And honestly, I think that was the last change I needed to make. And if something happens to where I, you know, put an encrusting core on one of these accent pieces, now I have two additional ones in the sump, ready, cycle, covered with bacteria that I can just swap out, you know, if that time comes. So ultimately, guys, I think this is going to be the final aquascape. And it just has tons of potential. I can already kind of see my mind working as far as what cores I want to put where and the overall theme and look at the tank. This is definitely going to be dope. So for those of you all wondering, all eight fish that survived the observation slash quarantine setup, those guys hung out for around four weeks. No spots, no flashing, no, you know, behavior issues. So these guys are good to go in the main display. And these guys are eating like pigs. So, you know, they're constantly hanging out by the feed door. And I've been working hard on feeding these guys two or three times a day, getting them acclimated, getting them fattened up. And most importantly, adding nutrients to the system, uh, which, you know, after doing 100% water change are pretty much non-existent. And this is going to be the fastest way to build those nutrients up is feeding the fish heavy, you know, letting them poop, letting them do what they do and just kind of leaving this water in the tank and not changing it again for a while. So that's going to be my ultimate plan to build these nutrients up. But keep in mind, I'm fighting against something that I've never had to fight against before. And that is the salt. Uh, this hybrid salt has probiotic bacteria, which actually removes nitrates and phosphates. So I haven't seen in the hobby a lot of people starting a tank from the beginning stages with this salt or any probiotic salt. So it's very interesting to see how this is going to infect, you know, my experience in the hobby when it comes to keeping nutrients up in the system when it comes to even needing nutrient export you know am i going to need the scrubber am i going to need a skimmer you know it's really interesting seeing how this is going to affect things and it kind of brings us into the next topic of question what is the ultimate plan for the tank well guys you know i've been doing some research i've been doing some reading and watching and you know learned a lot as far as the biome uh, from brs as far as the different style tanks they've had and i consider my tank a blend of multiple things you know i'm using dry rock i started with live sand which probably isn't live due to the kind of bacteria that's in it but ultimately a dry sterile system that i've seeded with aquaforce biomedia which has bacteria in it which i've seeded with you know live rock rubble from the lfs which has bacteria I also added multiple strains of bacteria in the bottle from Microbacter 7, ATM Colony, Seachem. I pretty much created a bacteria cocktail in the tank. And on top of that, I've also added multiple bottles of copepods, phytoplankton, 
Yeah, as you guys can see, the ultimate goal is clear here. I'm trying to create a biodiverse tank and be able to create a tank with built-in defenses when it comes as far as a bacteria level and a microfinal level. It's kind of following what I've seen on BRS's site and just the research I've done. Is it going to work out? You know, are these multiple strains of bacteria going to compete with each other? Are they going to slow down the cycle? You know, are they going to cause issues later down the road? That's going to be a great question that we are going to answer together in this series and, you know, document this tank. So trying something I've never done before. You know, I'm trying to prevent issues from happening. And if it all goes well, I hopefully will be able to skip the entire ugly phase of a tank. You know, diatoms, algae breakouts. And if that ends up happening, then this new be easy biome is what I'm going to call it. And hopefully, you know, if someone repeats this process, the same can happen for them. So, but that's pretty much going to be the main point of this update. You know, got the water change done. We got the fish installed. Uh, we're dealing with a little bacterial bloom, which will clear up once everything gets settled in. And ultimately, we're just going to keep rolling, guys. So more fish, coral, all of that's coming next. We finally got to the fun stages of the build, adding life to the tank. And I'm very happy to kind of share and document this with you all. So once again, if you're not following me on Instagram, definitely slide over, hit the follow button. I update a lot frequently there. It's a little quicker to do pictures, but as far as YouTube, hey, you guys like, comment, subscribe. You guys keep doing what y'all do. Y'all be easy and happy reefing.